So you just got yourself a new smartwatch or a new heart rate chest strap to up your game and took it out for a run? If only it were that simple. <laughs> Jokes aside, it actually is. Hi guys, I'm Kafi Shub and today let's talk heart rate. The best, most useful and most worth for the money upgrade one can do is to add heart rate into the training program and this is regardless of your sport. You could be cycling, swimming, running, skiing, golfing, zumba, spinning, absolutely anything and incorporating heart rate is going to be a game changer. Today let's stick to running. So just having your heart rate data, like that raw number, is not all that useful for you. Like, what does 140 even mean? Is that where you're supposed to be? Is it too high? Is it too low? Is it good for you? Is it not good for you? This is where lactate threshold comes into picture. What is lactate threshold? Break the word down. Lactate and threshold. Lactate is a chemical, the same one that causes all the burning when you're working out. Threshold is the point where something happens. Lactate threshold together is the point where you produce more lactate than you can remove. Simple. Okay, so how do you calculate your lactate threshold? For this, you're going to need a device that can calculate your heart rate and preferably running laps as well. There are two tests. I'll take you through both of them. The first test is a 30 minute test. In this, you have to first pick a relatively flat road without any interruptions. Also, warm up for 10 minutes and longer if required. Now you'll start tracking a new lap and speed up to the fastest speed you think you can sustain for 30 minutes. Then you press the lap button after the first 10 minutes and then again after 20 minutes. So in total, 30 minutes. So your average heart rate, your average beats per minute for the last 20 minutes of this test is your new lactate threshold. Now a few pointers. This is a very, very, very difficult test. You, in essence, have to go all out running for 30 minutes and that too, you'll have to do multiple times since pacing something like this is really challenging. Luckily, there's a second test, which is much easier and perfect for beginners. Test two, pick a flat road with no interruptions. Warm up for 10 minutes, more if required. Start tracking now and speed up to the fastest speed you think you can sustain for 30 minutes. Now as you're running, wait for your heart rate to level off. So wait for it to reach a point where it no longer changes. The heart rate where you level off is a close approximation to what your lactate threshold is going to be. This is a much simpler, easier test, although not as accurate. However, it is still a great place to start as compared to not having anything. Ideally, whichever test you do, do it at least twice or thrice with a few days of rest in the middle to get the most accurate results. Also, if you've learned something new in this video, a sub to my channel would be amazing. Back to the video. As a side note, depending on what device you're using, there may be a method to track your lactate threshold. My Garmin, for example, does it automatically when I'm running. So find out if your device can track it. Keep in mind though that the accuracy depends on a lot of factors, so I would suggest you to do the test I mentioned anyways. So now that you have your magic number, your lactate threshold, you can use that to calculate your heart rate running zones. As an example, I will take the lactate threshold of 167 beats per minute. This calculation has seven zones. So accordingly, zone one is 72% to 81% of your lactate threshold. That's equal to 120 to 135 beats per minute. Similarly, zone two is 81 to 90% of your lactate threshold. That's equal to 135 to 150 beats per minute. Zone X, 90 to 95%. Zone 3, 95 to 100%. Zone Y, 100 to 102%. Zone 4, 102 to 105%. And finally, Zone 5 at 105% plus. Luckily, there are many apps or websites that do this calculation for you. I have linked the one I use down in the description. You can use that too. All you have to do is put in your lactate threshold and that will give you your zones. Once you have your heart rate running zones, start a training plan and run according to that. A well-made running plan can literally give you a year's worth of benefits in just six months. A very famous protocol used by a lot of athletes is the 80-20 running protocol. In this, you spend 80% of your time training in zone 1 and zone 2, and the rest 20% of your time training in all the zones above. Based on that, you can create your own training plan or even better, hire a coach to do so. And these are the basics of lactate threshold and heart rate zones. They sound complicated at first, but as you've just seen, they're fairly simple. All you have to do is go through your test to find your lactate threshold and you'll be good to go. And if you want to become a better runner, do subscribe to Coffee Shop. It's free and that's a great price. I'll see you again very soon.